It is time now for our Common Ground segment. Joining us tonight are two members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Florida Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz and Rep Republican Congressman from New York, Mike Lawler. Thank you both for being here. Uh, one of the things that you have common ground on is a new piece of legislation. It's called the SHIP Act uh, legislation, Stop Harboring Iranian Petroleum. Uh, basically, a policy statement that the U.S. should deny Iran the ability to engage in destabilizing activities, imposes sanctions against entities that engage in illicit Iranian oil trade, and report on Iranian petroleum exports. Uh, Congressman Moskowitz, why is this important and why now? Well, first, Brett, thanks for having us. Common Ground is obviously extremely important, and we can find that here uh, in fighting Iran. And so what's going on is this closes a loophole that right now are, uh, Iran and their funders are using to get Iranian oil uh, and for, our, for the regime to make money. So this will put additional uh, sanctions, as you mentioned, on ports and refineries. And as we saw, I, I, Iran is using that money, mostly that they're getting from China, to use as a destabilizing force. They're helping out, obviously, Russia by supplying drones. And, and just lately, uh, Israel had to go into Jenin uh, to, to, to work on the fact that Iran is funding, uh, continuing to fund Hamas's actions there. So that's why this is just so important. It continues to squeeze the Iranian regime from destabilizing the world. Congressman Lawler, I, it's really amazing the export numbers. If you look at revenues, um, Iran net oil export revenues, 2020, 15 billion dollars, 2021, 40 billion dollars. Reuters has this piece that it's a five year high. Uh, sanctions are in place, but perhaps they're not fully implemented or monitored. Goes on to say, even as the, the Biden team is kind of negotiating uh, nuclear talks. Why is this important and how do you get common ground on this in Congress? Well, there's no question uh, that Iran, China, North Korea, Russia uh, have engaged in an unholy alliance that certainly is focused on destabilizing and undermining the United States and our allies. And while the United States has uh, sanctions in place against Iranian petroleum, uh, many of our allies and many of our adversaries do not. And so it's critically important uh, that we put in place additional sanctions uh, on those uh, who would use uh, Iranian uh, petroleum or seek to refine it or transport it uh, through ports and vessels uh, and put sanctions in place that would hold them accountable. And I think obviously today with the news that, you know, Iranian petroleum uh, is flooding the market uh, as the Saudis cut production, uh, there's no question that this is timely uh, and Congress needs to act. And as Jared said, I mean, this is an issue we can find common ground on, uh, and we should, and we should move expeditiously, and the administration should support us in this, uh, because they are doing everything they can, Iran, uh, to destabilize the Middle East uh, and, and work counter uh, to the work that has been done with the Abraham Accords, for instance, to normalize relations with Israel. Congressman Moskowitz, uh, the Iranian oil exports to China, you mentioned China. They are a beneficiary of this. If you look at this chart, it, it's pretty amazing to see the second highest pace really since 2017 for Iranian oil to be going to China. There is common ground also on Capitol Hill in trying to uh, figure out ways for the U.S.-China relationship uh, and to thwart uh, China's aggressiveness. Uh, that's a big part of this as well. Yeah, no question, Brett. Uh, look, there's a China Select Committee that was established on a bipartisan basis. I support the work that the committee uh, has been doing. I mean, look, China, uh, you know, has copied a lot of our playbook uh, from decades and decades and decades of U.S. experience. What they're doing is they're going around the world and where the U.S. is either leaving or contracting or finding ways to even one-up the U.S. is they're offering free money to these countries. They're offering to loan money for their projects. By the way, they bring in Chinese workers for these projects. They don't even help the economy or put anyone to work in these countries. But China has made significant progress in countries like Africa, uh, continents like Africa. And so it's deeply concerning. And the American people need to understand that everywhere that there is a vacuum right now, China is filling it. And they're doing this in order to get world influence and, you know, Mike and I went on a, a CODEL together, a bipartisan CODEL that, that Speaker McCarthy led. And every country we went to, China was the one topic that came up universally. And so, look, they're a problem. They're, they're going to be a problem not for the next year, the next five years. This is a generational problem that we're going to have with China. 
And I, Iranian oil is, is one piece to the puzzle there. Let me just play the sound by this is from State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller about the Iranian sanctions. Take a listen. We do continue to vigorously enforce our sanctions on Iran. We don't hesitate to take action against uh, sanctions in, invaders. Um, we've taken uh, those actions numerous times uh, in the world, and we regularly engage with countries and strongly discouraging, discourage them from taking steps uh, with respect to Iran that contravene U.S. sanctions. Congressman Lawler, if there would be a need, there would not be a need for your legislation had that really been true had the Iranian sanctions really be effective it doesn't seem like they're either being enforced or are effective well I, I think obviously uh, I agree we need to strengthen uh, the sanctions uh, and that's why we've introduced this legislation because uh, it's not working uh, but secondarily uh, to the point Jared made China continues uh, to be our greatest geopolitical foe uh, they are the most destabilizing force uh, around the globe. Uh, in addition to the bipartisan codel that we went on to Jordan and Israel uh, and, and on, I went to Japan, Korea, and Taiwan earlier this year. Uh, and China, of course, is uh, the greatest threat in the, in the Indo-Pacific. So, you know, what is happening here, uh, they are in cahoots with Iran. Uh, they are working together. Uh, as I said, in an unholy alliance with Russia, with North Korea. Uh, and so these sanctions are paramount. And to make it clear uh, around the world that this type of behavior, uh, the funding of terrorism in the Middle East, uh, will not be tolerated. Uh, and China needs to understand that. And the only way to do that is to enforce tougher sanctions on those uh, that would use Iranian petroleum, uh, transport it, uh, or refine it. And so this is critically important. Last thing for both of you quickly, you know, we've done this segment now for a long time, and there are more and more uh, folks from both sides of the aisle coming up here to talk about this. For the people sitting at home and saying, hey, listen, this is rose-colored glasses, um, there's not a lot of bipartisanship in this country, uh, for both of you to just weigh in about how you work across the aisle, uh, start with you, Congressman Moskowitz. Well, thanks, Brett. I think that's a really important question, because I actually I think one of the things that uh, the American people don't get to see is that there's actually a lot of people in Congress that would like to work together and find ways and issues to work together on. You know, we don't unfortunately get a lot of publicity. That's why this show is so important. Uh, this segment is so important to do that, because the American people don't get to read about it. They don't see it in their newspaper. They don't see it on late night TV, regardless of the TV station you're watching. Uh, but there are people who want to work together. Uh, and, you know, you know, it used to be that, you know, partisanship stopped at the water's edge. And, and that's still very true. I can tell you, and, you know, I, I defer to Mike, but when we left the country, I mean, we were, we were one team going into these meetings. And then when we come back, we put our jerseys back on. And so we can work together. We should work together. I think that's what the American people want to see. And I appreciate that you, you have a segment like this that allows us to come together. Look, it's, uh, I, Jared's uh, a thousand percent correct. Uh, most members of Congress do want to work together and find commonality uh, to, to serve our country and advance legislation that actually addresses the challenges we're facing. I'm proud of the fact that the first bill I passed in Congress just a few weeks ago to create a special envoy for the Abraham Accords, uh, I did that with Congressman Richie Torres, a progressive Democrat from the Bronx. Uh, you know, here, this bill introduced bipartisan uh, Jared and I. I've worked with Congressman Gottheimer and I'm a member of the Problem Solvers Caucus. So you have to find opportunities. You have to be willing to do that. Uh, and I think Jared and I certainly show that it can be done and, and we're willing to engage for the betterment of our country. Congressman Moskowitz, initially, most of Russia's sanctions were imposed all at once. Iran is different. In, uh, in other words, we did it in steps um, to try to do something to alter the, the situation with Iran. Is one more effective than the other? No, I, look, I, I think all these sanctions work together, right? I mean, that's the whole idea here, is I don't think there's one sanction that will work. I think it takes multiple sanctions, dozens of sanctions, and it takes them all working together, sanctions on China, sanctions on Russia, sanctions on Iran, because as Mike has mentioned, right, these countries are all working together as kind of the underbelly uh, of society because the rest of the world is united against them. And so, 
there's not just one thing that you have to do and you have to constantly tinker with it because anytime you put a rule in place, which is what a sanction is, then people try to figure out what the holes are and how to work against it, which is why you come back and you strengthen that sanction or you put a different sanction in place. And so, listen, I think the sanctions on Russia with what's going on in Ukraine and the sanctions on uh, the Iranian regime are, are both equally important. And Congressman Lawler, Iran has a shadow banking system. They've figured out how to get around a lot of U.S. sanctions. There's even reporting that Iran is trying to help Russia do the same thing. Are you seeing that? Is that a concern for you? I think it's uh, a great concern, uh, certainly. These sanctions are intended to apply uh, primarily economic pressure uh, and, and force behavioral change. Uh, in the case of Russia, I don't think they anticipated uh, the unified blowback uh, that would come from their uh, invasion of Ukraine uh, and the illegal war that has been conducted by Vladimir Putin. I think certainly, uh, you know, Iran uh, continues to, uh, you know, thumb its nose uh, at U.S. Uh, sanctions, at our allies, uh, and continues to work uh, to uh, undermine uh, the state of Israel uh, and abolish it. And so I think we need to be very unified, uh, along with our allies, in pushing back vociferously against uh, actions that Iran is taking, whether it is producing and disseminating uh, petroleum or uh, whether it is trying to undermine the sanctions that have been put in place and work with Russia and China uh, to do that. So I think we need to continually be aggressive. And to your earlier question, I mean, I think the sanctions, really, it's a question of how effective they are uh, and, and you know, what is warranted given the actions taken. Obviously, with Russia, a, a quick and thorough uh, and aggressive list of sanctions was necessary. I think with Iran, uh, you know, it has been incremental. Uh, but I think we need to be stronger because they are getting closer to having a nuclear weapon and they continue to fund terrorism uh, throughout the Middle East. So this is critically important. We need to be unified both here and abroad uh, with respect to sanctions. Yeah, last thing. I mean, it, there's just real questions whether these sanctions are working overall. Do you all see evidence that it is? Russia continues to sell oil, continues to sell oil to China, as does Iran. Uh, there are reports of, of a pinch in both countries economically, but are they really having the desired effect that they were set up for? I think well, when you're dealing with uh, dictators uh, and despots, uh, they don't really care about the, the consequences and the ramifications. But collectively, these sanctions that have been applied uh, to Russia, to Iran, to China, uh, do cause uh, a great deal of harm to them economically. And sometimes it takes longer than we would like uh, for their behavior to change. But I don't think there's any question with respect to the Russian invasion of Ukraine that it, had, it has had a significant impact on them uh, and, and their ability to, to manage that war. So, you know, they are working. Are they working as uh, fast or, or expeditiously as we'd like? Probably not. But you have to continue to apply pressure uh, wherever you can. Last word, Congressman Moskowitz. No, I was going to say I agree with that. And obviously, if they weren't working, both countries wouldn't continue to ask them to disappear. I mean, they are working. Do they work 100 percent? You know, no. You have to continue to tinker with the sanctions, which is why we're coming with this bill. Uh, but look, what's the alternative, right? If you don't do sanctions, the alternative uh, is obviously a lot more costly because now we're talking about war with the Iranian regime. And so you come with sanctions and you try to build a coalition of nations, uh, which is what we've done uh, with supporting Ukraine and Russia. And so, listen, I think there's more that we can do. Obviously, we shouldn't be doing anything, uh, you know, with any negotiations with Iran. I'm happy that those negotiations on, on any Iranian deal have ceased. They should cease. We shouldn't be doing anything with them. We should continue to keep up the pressure. Uh, with sanctions in Iran and let it run its course. Okay. Thank you both so much. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.